Alright guys, welcome back to the channel and this is a video I've been planning to make for the last while. It is of course the South African Shield. I've got to watch a couple of games, I know a bit more about the players and the teams. So it's kind of more of an ideal time for me to make it rather than at the start where it was definitely where I knew nothing bar what I saw in the Lions store. And obviously their teams are a little bit different. Even some of the teams that I go to show you today, uh, they're not exactly the same because I saw Dwayne Vermeulen is still down for being with the Bulls. So let's just get into this video. And what we're going to talk about first, of course, is the South African Shield, like I've already mentioned. Emirates Lions, Celsius Sharks, Vodacom Bulls, DHL Stormers, all brand spanking new into this competition, the United Rugby Championship, which has so far put out some very exciting games. And I've actually quite enjoyed it so far. It's so kind of a competition I was more worried about because Pro 14 had generally been notorious for poor standard of rugby, but the amount of games I've watched so far, uh, it's actually been a very, very high standard, and I don't know what that is. Maybe it's exciting. Maybe it's the pent up thing of wanting to play for your clubs over the last year or two. Who knows what it is, but the South Africans have definitely added a little bit to it. And now, as always, uh, this little uh, shield that is now invented, uh, this is going to be their main games. They play each other twice. Uh, throughout the season and it's just going to be so important for these to get top of each other we can already see the way it's lining up now after three games Emirates lines on top Celsius Shark second then Bulls then Stormers uh, I don't think this is how it's going to finish uh, personally from beforehand I thought Lions were going to finish the very bottom and Celsius Sharks the very top and then between Bulls and Stormers but from what I've seen so far I still think the same because Stormers are very exciting against that monster side and I saw a little bit of what they're able to do. I'm looking forward to seeing what more they can come up with and, and especially when all these teams kind of get their uh, main players back I think that's going to be absolutely massive. There's no rocket scientists there but like I've mentioned in previous videos the DC African teams are going to have their internationals while other teams won't so there will be an advantage to be had at those points of the season although we won't get to see the South African internationals I imagine until about Christmas time which is fairly unfortunate because the autumn internationals are about to start which are more winter internationals the more I think about this thing and the overall look at the table looking very strong for uh, Irish sides uh, to be expected they are some of the strongest sides in this competition historically and with the South Africans coming in uh, just brand spanking new they take a bit of time to adjust we saw it with the likes of the Cheetahs uh, maybe not so much Southern Kings because they never really adjusted but the Cheetahs started to adjust to the Pro 14 after the first season and now or after, during that season and so the same thing I think is going to happen here especially when they get their superstars back I really do expect the Celsius Sharks to finish up in the top half of the table this season and we just go to the first team Emirates Lions not too much to shout home about for me bar two players Jordan Hendricks I remember him from the Lions tour and his brother I think it is is Jaden Hendricks who's now with the Celsius Sharks according to this so I'll keep an eye out for that and the other player was Vincent Shatuka who played very very well against the Lions so I'm looking forward to seeing more of him uh, outside of that I am not too excited about this team just yet but I haven't watched them yet this season in full I've only seen highlights and it seems to me like this is a very very small squad in comparison to everyone else so if you are South African and watching this fill me in why is there so little players showing up are you struggling to get players in I know uh, other teams in South Africa are struggling in terms of going get taken over by South African rugby itself but I, it wasn't the Lions who was that so uh, do let me know but I'm sure there's going to be big bruisers, nice young players coming through due to the South African constant talent pool that they seem to be able to have. And then um, as the season goes on, I'll get to know these guys a bit more. But it is partly the reason why I think they're going to finish bottom. If we go to the Bulls, a more well-known team, of course, uh, when these guys get some of their... Uh, South Africans back apart from Dwayne Vermeulen he is no longer there of course he is going back to Ulster and uh, these will become a much more exciting prospect and of course they have Gio Aplon as well I don't know if he's there anymore of course because we've seen Dwayne Vermeulen there but if they have Gio Aplon he was Cheslin Colby before Cheslin Colby existed and in terms of other players we're looking forward to seeing and Marcel Coetzer of course we've seen a lot with Ulster previously he's well used to this league so he's going to have no issues adjusting here Mornay Stain of course a bit of a lion killer there we of course know who he is been around for ages Trevor Inyakane great player and there'll be others in there who I am not too familiar with which is why we start off with these two teams but historically Bulls have been a strong club and then we'll go to the Stormers who I think are the strongest club in South Africa 
uh, in terms of history and they have a lot of South African stars who are away so we are expecting big things from them they're already playing very well if you're missing people in the fours like Franz Malherbe and Steven Kitsoff, uh, of course your pack can get better and stabilize that scrum which sometimes they could struggle with uh, and then in the backs you have Herschel Yanchis, you have Damian Williams you have Warwick Land, who's been playing very well. Tim Swill, who's a pretty solid player for this level. And Seabol Sanatla, and then a 10 has been playing recently, Manny Libok. These are very, very talented players, and we are looking forward to seeing how these guys get on throughout the season. Seabol Sanatla, pretty famous for sevens and speed. So he's going to cause a lot of hassle in terms of where I think they'll finish. You have most likely dimensions of the Volcan Bulls probably around the 8-9 position. The Lions I think are going to end up finishing uh, lower than that probably down here in the 13-14 position where Sharks and Volcan Bulls are now. Uh, Stormers I expect the 8-9 they're trying to escape into here up to the top 8 but it's going to be fairly difficult in their first season of this. And then we're going to go on to the Celsius Sharks immediately now and I would have them finishing probably up around the top four i think these will be the one team you can guarantee from south africa that will finish in these knockout round uh, positions on the team and we move on to the the Celsius sharks and the reason obviously why i think they're going to finish top and up in the top four is because if they have got players like a fella fassi they have bongi and banambi corin bosch has been brilliantly bought at chamberlain who's done the three drop goals in the one game and got kicker the week or whatever and uh, the most recent week as this is being filmed other players, Gerber and Grobler, is just a solid, solid man. You don't want to mess with Jaden Hendricks. Probably more talented than those Hendricks brothers. Performed very well. I think he got his first South African call up as well uh, quite recently and a, cup, a cap to his name. And uh, Lucanio Am, Makazoli and Mpimpi, two probably the best players in their positions respectively. Especially Lucanio Am. Big respect for him. Ruin Pinar, who's been through this league numerous times. He just keeps going, keeps performing. In games I've seen him already, he has performed pretty well. Ox Inch, obviously a very good player. So when these South African lads come back, you've got Spoo and Kosi, you have Sia Khaleesi as well. Werner Koch is already there, hasn't quite performed yet, but when all these players I'm mentioning come back into the club, that is when he'll probably stand out, as if all the pressure won't be on him to create. And then Yo Penks has been a bit of a danger man in the games I've seen him in already, so I expect that to continue throughout the season, as he will be expected to play more when Mapimpi is away on international duty or injured or whatever. But those are the four teams, and that is the reason why I think they finish where they finish. Although my knowledge base isn't that big on the South African teams just yet i'm looking forward to going throughout the season and actually watching these teams and seeing how they perform in the northern hemisphere rugby because notoriously northern hemisphere rugby has been seen as worse than southern hemisphere for obvious reasons you know we don't have as many world cups we only have the one in england uh, and closest have been our france and maybe a hyped up ireland side or welsh side but never those two teams never really had an opportunity and bar people believing in the nation that they should have got one. So we just have to live with that and being a bit inferior to these Southern Hemisphere teams who clearly have the opportunity to win the World Cup. So that was me going through those four teams and kind of danger men, who to look out for. But unfortunately, I don't know enough about them to go too in depth and I'll openly admit that. But it's just kind of the opening to the season of this. In the future of the videos that I'm going to be, I'm going to start reviewing certain games in a bit more detail. I'm going to try to do round reviews when I get time, but I can't obviously watch every single game. It just can't fit into my schedule whatsoever. I tried it for the first two, it's just not going to work, so I'm going to choose a singular game and do a proper preview on it and a proper review. Maybe you get to, and you might get important. If there's an important round with a lock on that I've actually been able to do, we might get a full review uh, and then obviously throughout the week we i will be doing more topical pieces such as interesting things at the moment like ireland's 10 position in terms of, from my perspective ben healy joey carberry what's the selection process going to be like there uh, plenty of discussion along there who what south african stars are actually performing well when their internationals are away that's another topic i have planned how other certain teams are getting on and young players good players uh, surprises are benetton actually going to win everything like i imagine they will uh, those sort of things are going to come from this channel so if you're looking forward to that do subscribe to the channel uh, follow me on instagram if you like to see uh, graphic design content i'm making ultimate team cards at the moment for players in this competition uh, just to see what i'm rating so you can tell me how wrong i am about them i uh, follow the link down below and if you enjoyed the video of course leave a like 
comment uh, let me know what you think of what I thought are the players that I should be worried about coming from these teams probably are because you know I haven't seen these guys play in the Super Rugby for however long and now they're up here trying to play uh, the teams that I'm used to so massive learning curve for me coming through this season uh, so leave your comments down below about what I've missed and what I don't understand uh, of course I hope you had a good week I hope you had a good weekend and of course have a good one good luck